<laughs> hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. It is 7.04, so I think I'm, I did pretty good tonight with my time. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I want to come in on this evening and speak to my wives about the S word, honey. All right. Actually, I have two S words <laughs> because we was not able to make it um, last week due to a little mini hurricane that we had. So, I'm going to be answering both of those questions on tonight. Hello, hello, hello. I am trying to just lock some stuff in here. We was not able to make it in on last week due to the hurricane that shut us down. And let me tell you. But my house don't have no internet. We like zombies around here. You should have seen my husband and sons. <laughs> we don't do good at all when we don't have any internet. And it was crazy. We didn't have it for almost three days. So I had to cancel last week's question and answer on um, his wife Thursday. When we talk about our hot topics. And so I want to make sure that I address last week's question as well, trying to give people some time to get on. Listen, my name is Coach T. I am a marriage and life coach slash wedding efficient. But on this page, I am his wife coach. All right, his wife coach. And so I wanted to... Give people time to come on. If not, you may always go back and catch the replay because I have a session right after this. I'm not going to stay on as long. I'm just going to just dive right into um, the questions and go in. But before I do that, I want to show you the His Wife shirts are in. Listen, so we have... Had to cancel the his wife walk, but the his wife movement still continues. The his wife walk had to be canceled due to um, the limited the limited of people that didn't RSVP, and I did not want to chance it with um, the weather as well because where I'm from up here in my state, we live bipolar with the weather. And so sometimes it'll say one thing and do something different. And so we did have a backup plan. We did have a backup space um, for that. But um, because of the number of people um, that some had RSVP and some had canceled, I just made a decision to say, you know what, let's just wait. Do this at another time on another date when we're able to grab a hold of more people. Um but it does not mean the movement doesn't continue. We are always on a mission, honey, concerning this assignment as his wife. So last week question, um, and I'm going to just jump in. And before I get into the question, I always try to say my little claws. <laughs> I try to give you the definition of what his wife is, my definition of um, his wife, what I feel like the Lord has given to me. Um, I try to give you a description of where I get it from. And I like to remind wives that this is not every wife's assignment. Just because you are his wife doesn't mean you have the assignment that his wife requires. I use the hashtag his wife because um, it's catchy. And we are really, really, really um, his wife as far as God's concerned with what we have to do. But you can still be your spouse's uh, wife and this may not necessarily be your assignment. So the definition 
of his wife is a wife God chooses to carry out his divine orders for his wayward son. A wife God chooses to carry out his divine orders for his wayward son. This wife has found favor with the Lord, similar to Jesus' mother, Mary. She has found favor with the Lord. One of her earthly assignments, and I say and I emphasize one because she has many assignments, but one of her earthly assignments as his wife is to help her husband get back or return to Jesus. And she do so by carrying her marital cross. That is the definition of his wife. Hashtag his wife, Coach T's uh, uh, definition from what I feel like the Lord shared with me. All right. His wife is a picture of what John 15, 13 says, which it simply says, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for another's friend. Our whole mission as his wife, one of our missions in our relationship to our husbands is to represent Christ, to show him God, to uh, be an example of what uh, Christ looks like. Um, and sometimes that means carrying a marital cross that mm, everybody probably wouldn't do. <laughs> everybody probably wouldn't do. But this is the assignment that God has called his wife to. All right. And so I always like to emphasize that this is not for everyone. Um, I, I get a lot of controversy, you know, controversy on subjects like this, you know, of what a wife should, you know, should expect and what a wife should, shouldn't take and what a wife should do and should not do. And like I always try to, that's why I read those little clause in the beginning, because this is not everybody's call. I would even recommend this for everyone. All right. And so the question from this week, we're going to start with this week. This week question was, and I'm just trying to go to my page so I can get the exact question. Basically, it was saying, what does submission looks like in marriage? What does submission looks like in marriage? Listen, no wife wants to talk about submission. It's almost like a prison sentence when that word comes up. Submission? Submission? <laughs> I mean, you get an attitude. You you got the, you, you know, you're looking sideways. You're looking, you know, funny. Uh, nobody wants to talk about submission. I remember, and I got to just share this transparent uh, moment. I remember working at this job and, um, one of the young ladies I was working with, um, I guess she didn't know I was married. And so I was telling her, yeah, I'm married. I've been married for, you know, a certain amount of years of this and that. Or whatever. She said, oh, my goodness. I, I never would um, consider you to be the, the, the marrying type, the, the submissive type. I was like, what? <laughs> Listen, she was basically trying to say I wasn't I wasn't submissive enough to be um, a wife. But let me tell you something. When you have this role as his wife, oh, submission becomes your friend. Okay. Even if you don't want to be submission friend, submission becomes your friend. And so I want to share with you, um, what God word says about submission. I never come on here and give what I think. I always try to, uh, give you Bible. That's, that's my, I go to the Bible first and I give you everything else next. I go to the Bible first and give you everything else next. I don't know how people do marriage, do life without Christ. I don't, I don't know how you do that. God bless you. If you can, God bless you. Um, you cannot do marriage without the help of God. And so when I give any type of coaching advice, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. So I tell people that ahead of time when they come to me and want me to coach them, you might want to, you know, do your research on me um, because I'm not just, I'm not a, you know, a regular coach, like, you know, a lot of coaches, I'm not, I'm not going to just tell you or anything. I'm gonna give you truth. And so I want to go to what God word says about submitting. And in Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verses 21, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. All right. And be subject to one another in the fear of God. That's the so it's two different versions. The NASB say submitting yourself one another to in the fear of God. And then the NLT version says um, submit to one another out of reverence to God. Hello. 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 If you're just joining me, we're talking about submission. Um, it's a word that wives don't like to talk about. <laughs> 
because it seems like a prison sentence to them in a sense. Um, I try, I don't try, I do. I go by what God's word says when it comes down to submission um, and try to help uh, wives understand this from a biblical perspective. Um, it's no different for, um, let's just say you're working on a job. All right. You're working on a job. And, you know, a lot of people, and this is, I think this is in Colossians, where it talks about, you know, you're not working for the person. You're working um, like you're working unto Christ. And so it's the same thing when it comes down to submission, especially, especially, especially if you are dealing with a unsubmissive, unsaved spouse. It is hard. It is hard to submit to someone who is not following the Bible. It is hard. And and this is why I'm doing this video, because a lot of people feel like if that person is not submissive to God, then their wife do not have to be submissive to them. And let me tell you something that is incorrect. Based off of what God's word tells us, that is incorrect. Just because your spouse is not submissive to the Lord does not mean that you are not supposed to be submissive to your spouse. What people fail to understand is you're not submitting to uh, your spouse because of your spouse. You're submitting to your spouse unto the Lord. Now, in all things, in all things, you have to you, you have to use wisdom. In all things, you have to use wisdom. And so, I put down um, an example. So, say for instance, and this is a, this is a really light example. Your spouse want to hang out with some of his buddies three days out of the week, and you've talked to him and you told him, you know, that you were really not in agreement with him hanging out this many days out of the week. You know, I don't think this is you know good or healthy for a married person to be hanging out with their friends as many times in a week, all right? And they basically flat out ignore your feelings, okay? They flat out ignore your feelings because they have ignored your feelings and because they have not taken taken into consideration um, what, what you said or what you shared with them, we as wives do not have control over our husband's will. I want to say that again. We as wives do not have control over our husband's will. And so because we do not have control over their will and they are still considered our husbands, you submit to their choice, not because you are in agreement with what they're doing or what they're, you know, how they're behaving. You're submitting to their choice as you reverence Christ. Now, what end up happening is <laughs> because so many wives do not have um, patience. <laughs> that's, that's the word I'm going to use. Yes. They don't have patience. What end up happening is when you, the problem is when, a, when you make a decision to, uh, to pray, you become impatient. A lot of wives are struggling in this area because um, they are not patient enough to wait on God to change their husband. As soon as your spouse has made a decision to come against what you said, if you said, honey, I don't like it. I don't like that you hanging out with your friends three times a week. I don't like that. I don't think that's good for a married man to do that. And you share that with them. You express your feelings to, towards him. You, you express how you feel about that. And he just kind of like shift you aside and push you aside, push you away. Your, your next step after that is to go into prayer, to go into prayer. Lord, I have brought the situation to my husband. I do not like what he's doing. I'm praying God now that you will show me how to handle this situation. I pray God that you will touch him, that you will open up his eyes, God. I'm praying for discernment. I'm praying that you would give him a revelation. You go into prayer. Once you go into prayer, you keep going. You pray, you keep going. You are submitted to the choice that he's made. Now, because he is a husband, he has an obligation to his wife. And so God is going to deal with him. But what happens is 
women, wives, go back and forth. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I'll... And so you shut down. You argue. You go back and forth with them. Oh, I ain't going to have sex with you. Or I ain't going to do this. Oh, I ain't going to cook your dinner. All right? And so now you go into this battle with him, which that's all the enemy want anyways. You go into this battle with him and then you never get to the place. So then when it comes down to the submitting part, you're like, oh, no, I'm definitely not doing that. You're not going to tell me what to do. Well, you ain't going to you don't get to do this and you don't get you don't listen to me. So why should I listen to you? So now both of y'all walking in disobedience. OK, <laughs> both of y'all walking in disobedience. So if you go to your spouse or your spouse come to you and ask something or, or, or share something or want to do something that you're not in agreement with, you're not submitting to your spouse. You're submitting to your spouse's choice. Again, I always say use wisdom. If your spouse be like, boo, let's go, you know, I want to have a, a, let's just, you know, I'm just throwing something out there. I want to have, you know, a threesome tonight. You're still obligation. You're, you're you're still obligated for your own salvation. Okay, <laughs> you're still obligated to your part in the marital covenant, and you know that doing something like that will go against God's words. So you have to still use wisdom. You use wisdom. You simply say no. That goes completely against what God has called me to do. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not in agreement with that. I'm not gonna do that. And He don't have no control over your will either. Okay. That's totally different. So you want to always, always make sure that you will use wisdom. But just because your spouse is not a believer of Christ does not mean you do not submit to them. Let's just say, for example, your spouse made a decision. You know, I ain't coming home tonight. I don't feel like it. I don't want to come home tonight. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to stay out all night. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think about it. I ain't coming home tonight. What can you do? You can argue. You can fuss. You can say all these things that you don't like. He already know that's not right. You submit to his choice. You go into prayer because in the prayer room is where God is going to deal with him on his part. The reason why a lot of wives do not get the results they want from their husbands is because they're not patient enough to wait on God to bring to pass what he's going to do. Because the first thing we want to start doing is doing the neck. We start going back to, you know, what we saw mom and them do. Oh, you tried it. That ain't the kind of life I'm living. We go by what the world say. We as wives have to learn the art of submitting. And that means we're submitting to God concerning our spouse, concerning our spouse disobedience, concerning our spouse uh, dysfunctional behavior. You are submitted not to your spouse, but you are submitting to your spouse's choice. You give that person their 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 choice to to whatever they decide they want to do, and you go into prayer. Lord, I don't agree with this. I don't like it. You go. You ask God to help you in this area. That's that's submission, y'all. Submission is getting up underneath. And you might not necessarily like the mission that they're doing. If you have, like I said, a dysfunctional spouse, um, you're not going to like their mission. <laughs> you're not going to like what they what they want to do. You're not going to like it. But as his wife, you still are to submit to your spouse. All right. And so that's the part I want to share with you about submission. Now, last week I had a question. It was about the other S word, which was about sex. Praise God. Yes, <laughs> it was about sex. And the young lady shared, I have 100% access to my husband, yet we share no intimacy. Is this grounds for the voice? I have 100% access to my husband, yet we share no intimacy. Well, let's just first say that intimacy is not always necessarily sex. Intimacy can be conversation. Intimacy can be watching TV. Intimacy can be, you know, dates. Intimacy can be just hanging out. Intimacy can just be sitting in the same room with each other. You know, intimacy is a lot of things. But I think she was talking about sex on this part. And wife, you cannot, <laughs> I know you never want to hear this. You cannot divorce your husband because sex is not um, being um, um, given in the, in the, in the marital covenant at a certain time. You just cannot do that. That is not a reason to exit out of your marital covenant. Now the law says 
if you are a bandit or if your spouse have abandoned you in that in that way, that gives you uh, a, a reason out of your out of your marital covenant. But based off of what God word says, the only exit that you get out of your marital covenant is if your spouse has caused um, adultery and infidelity in the marital covenant. That's the only way out of your marital covenant all right matthew 5 and 32 says again going back to what god word says about divorce divorce was only given as a option not a command if your spouse cheats on you but i tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to become an adulteress and anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery that's a lot. That's a lot. And I'm going to try to break it down for you a little bit. I'm going to try to break it down for you a little bit. So that basically said, if you divorce your spouse, any reason outside of them cheating on you, you place your spouse in a position where anybody who tried to marry that person or get with your spouse, they are now in an adulterous relationship. A lot of people bypass that part. I think they read the, the, the first part of it and they don't read the rest of it. If you divorce your spouse, and, and of course we have a forgiving God, and of course we have a merciful God, and of course we have a God who understands. But based off what the word is saying is, if you, I think I just feel like the whole point that God was making in this verse was, if you make a decision to to leave your spouse outside of being unfaithful, you place that spouse in a position where they're now entering into another relationship as an adulteress. And if you read the book of Revelations and you read the book of Hebrews, it talks about the adulteress and how uh, God is going to judge the adulterer. Okay. So if you and your spouse are not being intimate or not having sexual intercourse at that time, again, nobody likes to pray no more. <laughs> People say they won't, they, they pray, but I don't think people really are praying. Nobody likes to pray. Nobody likes to pray for a long period of time because it's almost like if I'm not seeing any results or seeing what I want to see in this, then I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this no more. I, I, I'm, I'm, this is not how I'm supposed to live. I'm supposed to be happy. This is not how marriage is supposed to be. This is not how God created me to be. I'm not supposed to be this way. And so you go and you have this battle with yourself about all the reasons and that's called entitlement. Okay. You have all these reasons why you feel like you're supposed to be a uh, certain happy in your marriage or covenant, not realizing that marriage is a assignment. Marriage is a ministry. God is always teaching you something. Marriage is uh, God's one of God's great ways of training his uh, his children uh, to do his will here on earth. OK, marriage is not just about and this is what people fail at going to the the altar and this is why as a marriage coach and a wedding official i always give my clients the option let's do premarital counseling let's do some premarital counseling so you can have a full understanding of what you're getting ready to walk into it's not just the flowers and the reception and how many people coming on the you know you have on your guest list and are we going to spend the rest of our life together and you know life is going to be so beautiful nobody talks about the spiritual side of the marital covenant marriage is so much more than sex marriage is so much more than oh we're going to spend our days on vacation and going out to dinner marriage is so much more than that and so many people miss that part before going into the marriage and so when they are married after the reception is over after the wedding party has happened after you done did all the glorious and nice you know wonderful things after you spend all your money <laughs> after you've done all that and all that is over now it's like uh this is not what I signed up for, but in actuality, you did because you did not do the premarital courses that will qualify. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, that would give you an understanding of what you were actually walking into. And so, so many people drop the ball in this area because they think marriage is just about husband and wife, white picket fence. We're going to have some children. We're going to go on vacation. We're going to go out to eat. It's going to be just us four, maybe three, whatever. <laughs> you know, we're going to live life happily ever after. We're going to have amazing sex. We're going to lay in a bed and hold hands all night. We're going to watch TV. We're going to sit and play date nights. And I'm not saying that those things should be eliminated. Those are all considered 
bonuses. And that's one of the things I express to couples in um, premarital camps, uh, premarital guidance. Those things are bonuses. Those things are bonuses in the marital covenant. All those things are bonuses. God created the marital covenant as a representation of how he loved his people. God is calling you wife. And this is why this is where the, his wife comes from. God is calling you wife to love your husband, whether y'all having sex, whether he's doing what he wants to do, whether he is uh not listening to your emotions and your feelings or you know god has called you to help your husband get to him and if you did not get that memo before you got married to him i'm 99.99.99 percent sure god has called you to be his wife to help you get to him this is what his wife um coaching this is what one of the things i do as far as being a his wife coach so leaving your spouse because you guys are not having sex that's a no-no <laughs> you can't do that now i want to just go down a little further okay the bible does talk about um separating from your spouse all right separating from your spouse but not necessarily divorcing them um one verse talks about if an unbelieving spouse make a decision to go it says let them go let them go you're not under any obligation if they leave now it says, let them go. Don't you push them out there. <laughs> Don't you force them. Don't give them no ultimatums. Like, oh, you can just go then. You can just go. No. It says, if an unbelieving spouse make a decision to go, you let them go. You're not under any obligation to um, con continuing that. All right? If your spouse is beating on you, again, this is where you have to use wisdom at. If your spouse is beating on you, it is advised that you separate from your spouse. Why would you stay with somebody who is beating on you? That don't make no type of sense, okay? Do not allow your spouse to beat on you, all right? If your spouse is abusing you um, mentally or emotionally, the Bible tells you to separate yourself from evil doers. Set boundaries for yourself. You have an obligation to steward yourself well. You have an obligation to steward yourself well. You don't allow that person to mistreat you or 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 um deteriorate your self esteem, your emotions, your no. You don't. You don't let nobody do that. No spouse. No nobody. Nobody does that. You have an obligation to steward yourself. And a lot of women, a lot of wives, a lot of um young ladies that I come in contact with, they don't have that understanding. They think it's okay for that person to talk to them in that way. No, I share all the time. Um, uh, one of the things that me and my husband struggled with in our marriage was he, you know, he liked to cuss and I'm not a cusser. I always try to cuss in our words. They ain't never like match. They ain't never go together. Anyways. <laughs> so I don't like cussing. And, and when I hear a young lady, cause I'll always say, oh my God, you're so pretty. Why are you using those type of words? You're too pretty to be using those kind of words. And so I was, I would tell her, I would, I would tell her, you know, um, in my, in my marriage, my husband was a, was a, was a cusser. And I would tell him, if you do not learn how to talk to me or if you have to talk to me with using cuss words then we don't talk we don't talk and so what that looked like was i had to set that boundary if you talk to me this way this is what i'm going to do and one of the things i was going to do was i'm not going to communicate with you i'm not going to communicate with you if you talking to me i don't communicate with nobody like that because first of all i don't got that kind of patience and tolerance and i might mess around and do something to you that's first okay i'm still god's still working on me so in order for everybody to be safe okay <laughs> In order for everybody to be safe, let me just walk away from this situation because I don't want to let this lead to something else. Okay, I don't want this to lead. I look, Coach T used to get in trouble a whole lot of times back in her day. I'm not trying to go back to my past, so I'm not going to entertain your cussing. I'm not going to entertain your fussing. I'm not going to entertain you talking to me any kind of way. I'm going to tell you that I don't like it, and I'm going to walk away, and you can talk to yourself. But if I stand there with you. Okay, <laughs> if I stand there with you and allow you to keep talking to me and some days, okay, we had our moments, but praise Jesus. God is still working on us. Come on, Jesus. And he getting so much better with that. All right. <laughs> He's getting so much better with that. And so you have to set boundaries for yourself. Okay. You have to set boundaries for yourself. Um, and so uh, 1 Corinthians 7 
chapter 7, verses 4 to 5 says, The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other, perhaps by mutual consent and only for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come back together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Listen, we don't have authority over our bodies when we, be, when we become husband and wife to someone. But at the same time, we cannot force anyone to be intimate with us either. That goes back to what I was talking about with submission. So this kind of go hand, kind of go hand in hand. If your spouse has made a decision not to um, share their body with you, that is their body. Even though the Bible says you don't have no authority over your body. Once you become husband and wife, you can't make them either. You cannot make them. And so prayer is my recipe to my wives. Prayer is my recipe. And the reason why I take prayer as my recipe, because it works. The quickest way to get the response you want from your spouse is not to be, eh, 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 eh. it ain't to do all that, it ain't the neck blowing and the this and that and rolling the eyes or oh, I'm going to, you know, get revenge. I'm going to do you like, that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. Listen, Coach T been in this thing for 15 plus years. I know. I've been married 15 years. I've been with my husband almost 17 years. I know. I know. That ain't it. The The best way to get the response that you want from your spouse, whether it's through intimacy, whether it's through whatever, is to go and God in prayer. Now, I always like to caution wise on don't just be going there praying on any old thing okay you it, it's best if you know what the bible says and pray god's will pray god's word god 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 will um he acknowledge his his words he 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 would he would he would come to to his word all right so it's best to um it's best to um go based off of what God were, not just be praying out your emotions, all right? Lord, I really want to be intimate with my husband. Your word tells us that we don't have authority over our bodies and that a husband and a wife are supposed to give each other to their bodies. Lord, I pray in your son Jesus and that you would touch my husband. You got to go in prayer. You got to learn how to pray for your husband. You got to learn how to pray things in. You have to know how to pray the uh, God's word into your marriage. Prayer is your rest. That's the only only one point I have for you tonight, prayer. Prayer is your recipe to get the things did. Now, sometimes people say, well, I've been praying and I've been fasting and I've been praying and I've been fasting and I still haven't seen uh, these things come to pass. More than likely, if you're praying and fasting for something and it's been going on for a long period of time, you're not just dealing with a natural situation anymore. You're dealing with a spirit spiritual situation and when you're dealing with a spiritual situation now you have to go into deeper warfare and that's a whole nother video a whole nother day all right but if you're praying god's word god's going to acknowledge his word if you're praying if your husband is doing this that and that god is going to come to his word and so to those wives who sent me those questions thank you thank you thank you i um answer do question and answers every thursday for my wife um if you send me a question i will answer i will discuss it and talk about it in detail um on thursday evenings and yeah that's that's how that goes all right <laughs> so it has been a pleasure speaking with you um Come on, Jesus, say that, say that, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. For we wrestle, now see, you could have made me go back in there. See, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Some things are a little bit out of our hands. Some things are, you know, are, are a whole different type of spiritual realm. And some things you can't just do that, now nah, laying down to sleep type of prayer. You have to go in full warfare. You have to go and, and, and know um, it's a technique to that. It's a t it's a technique for praying those types of prayers. You have to pray deliverance prayers, okay? You need the blood of Jesus prayers. You need the the fire of God prayers when you are dealing with a spiritual or a stubborn a uh, spirit or a stubborn spouse that's that's not um that's not moving when you when you pray certain things. You have to go deeper. You have to fast longer. You can't just fast for one day. You can't just fast for one hour. You got to go into deeper than that and. So many wives miss out. I gotta say this before I hate before I let this fall out. Let y'all go. So many wives miss out on a 
potential good marriage and the opportunity of seeing their husband come into full growth and good, a full relationship with Christ because of their laziness, because of their impatience, because of the it's and it's and selfishness is involved in that as well. So many wives are thinking, it's about me, it's about me, it's about me, it's about me. That happy wife, happy life stuff, get rid of that garbage, okay? <laughs> get rid of that garbage. Get rid of that garbage, okay? You miss out on seeing the, the, the it's like a, a flower that's been, that's, that's been, that's been, you know, coming, coming to life from a seed and it's growing to this, this wonderful thing. Listen, you miss the opportunity of seeing what God can do in your husband when you give up, when you, when you, when you throw in a towel, when you want things your way, when you have that entitled spirit, like, oh no, if you don't do this, somebody else will do it. Yes. Somebody else will do it. And you will look up one day and you don't put all that work into that man. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. You don't put all that work into that man and you see somebody else reaping the benefits of what you had started because you was being impatient. You was being girly. And you was being childish. I'm not a little girl. Listen, don't miss the opportunity of what God is trying to do. You have been called his wife for a reason. If God has given you that title of his wife, you have an assignment. You have an assignment to let to show your husband Christ. That is your assignment. Listen, that's all I have um, for you on to on this evening if you did not catch this from the beginning you can always go back and watch the replay i um offer wife coaching sessions um you can email me or um go visit my website at marriage chronicles by tanika.com that's marriage chronicles by tanika.com i do a 30-day wife plan with my wives just to help them go you know get through some of these things like some of these hard questions that you know a lot of people are 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 being taught the wrong way people are being taught the wrong way um and, and they're thinking one thing and, and is and something totally different and so i want to encourage you to visit me on my, on my website marriage chronicles by tanika.com and sign up for a his wife session sign up for a his wife session if you need something a little bit more in detail or you you know you want to work through some some trauma some some past things that you've been dealing with from relationships or from childhood just some things you want to work on it's my self-care soul care program that i offer my um woman all over it's not just for wives it's for wives it's for singles it's for ladies um and that's called her buoyancy boost that's her buoyancy boost that's a five week um healing journey that i do with my ladies just to help them get to a healthier place so many people so many women so many women are settling are settling are settling for less than god's best for their life it is such a thing as putting you first. <laughs> that is not selfish, but it's just a way you do it. It is such a thing as prioritizing you and making you an investment, but it's a way that you do it. And so I want to encourage you to sign up if you are um, dealing with anything in, 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 those, in those areas. Marriage Chronicles by Tanika.com. You can sign up. We will do your free um, consultation and we'll go from there. Listen, thank you guys for joining me. I will talk to you soon. Blessings.